second begotten son, which is Jesus Christ, that whosoever believe it in him, believe it in Jesus Christ, of course, should not perish, but have everlasting life. So lambs, you know, Jesus gave the very best gift to us, the gift of his son, Jesus Christ, for anyone that wills to receive that gift, Jesus Christ, the son of God. And it's a free gift from God, Jehovah Yah, to anybody in this world that wants to receive Jesus Christ as a personal Lord and Savior and want to receive that gift from God. Because he loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So when you receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior and accept that gift from God, that free love gift from God, you know, and believe in Jesus Christ, you will not perish, but you will have everlasting life. And Jesus is life. He is the everlasting life. And he is the only one that can keep you from perishing once you believe in him and put your trust in Jesus. Put your trust in Jesus Christ. So anyway, lambs, I'm going to go to part five. Love your enemies. Matthew 5, 4, 4. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. And then Luke six twenty seven, love your enemies. But I say unto you, which hear, love your enemies, do good to them which hate you. So I know many times, lambs, it's not easy for us to love our enemies. People that's just constantly persecuting you and abusing you, lying to you and lying about you, mistreating you, disrespecting you, kicking you to the curb all the time, rejecting you, abusing you and just totally violating your rights and and violating you and and just constantly just bumping you over, you know, stomping all over you with evils and evil schemes. You know, it's not easy to love these type of people that come against you, your enemies. So anyway, and it's not easy for me either, uh, lambs out there. So uh, I just want to uh, get these um verses out. I will be putting them in the description box for any one of you lambs out there that are interested in looking into these scriptures. And so I will do that. But the theme um, scripture that I want to go into is, um, well, I didn't do part six, sorry. It's 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and uh, 1 John 4, 7 through 8. So, but before I do that, I'm going to finish up with part six. Proverbs 17, 17, a friend, love it at all times, and, and a brother is born for adversity. So, lambs, when you have a friend, and if you have friends in your life that don't love you at all times, then they're not your friend. You know, a friend, love it at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. So some of you have people in your family, brothers and sisters, that they are more like your enemies and and they're not your friend and they're not even like a brother and a sister to you either. And I have that in my family as well. So but when you have a real friend, authentic friend in your life, uh, a friend love it at all times. And now a lot of you lambs that are being persecuted in modern day slavery programs like the covert gain stocking program. A lot of you do not have a lot of friends or no friends at all. But I tell you that you have a friend in Jesus Christ, a true friend in Jesus Christ, because Jesus Christ is the one that definitely love it you all at all times. He is the one that love it you at all times. He will not stop loving you and he won't be swayed by no gossip and no slander about you. He won't flip out on you. He won't switch on you or nothing. He will not betray you nor leave you nor forsake you or abuse or use you in any kind of way. Jesus will not let you down. Jesus is a true friend that you can count on. You may not can count on these evil phony friends that are 
surrounded by you or nothing or is trying to play up to be your friend. But you can count on Jesus Christ. And I definitely can count on Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is definitely my everlasting friend. So anyway, 1 John 4, 18. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear. Because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. So, you know, lambs, you know, when people are operating in the spirit of fear, you know, there is no fear in love. When you have people in your life or you're surrounded by people that are operating in the spirit of fear, they're not operating in the spirit of love and they're not operating in love. And when you have people that's surrounded by you that you have you're dealing with on a daily basis that's prejudiced toward you that have nothing but fear. They treat you like a pariah. They treat you like you're so distrustful and, and suspicious of you and always judging and condemning every little thing you do and say and spread lies about you, your enemies that come against you, especially in the lambs that are being persecuted through any modern day slavery program, especially the covert gain stocking program. A lot of your enemies, all your enemies, they're operating in the spirit of fear. They're not operating in the spirit of love. And the Bible says that there is no fear in love, like it says in 1 John 4, 18. But perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feared is not made perfect in love. So all your enemies that come against you, they're not made perfect in love because they're operating in fear toward you. By treating you like a pariah and treating you like an outcast and being prejudiced and bigotry toward you and suspicious of you all the time over everything that you're not even doing, stuff that you're not even doing, and stuff that you're not even saying. And they act in all schizophrenic toward you and paranoid toward you. And that's fear. That's the spirit of fear. And it's definitely not in the spirit of love. And prejudiced people are not operating in the spirit of love. They're operating in the spirit of fear. And that spirit of fear brings torment. Torment. When any of us operate in the spirit of fear, it brings torment. We're tormented by that spirit of fear. So God does not want us to operate in the spirit of fear. He wants us to operate in the spirit of love and walk in the spirit of love and love ourselves, love God, and love others. Because we have to love God with all our heart, soul, and might, and strength. And we have to love him first. And then we have to love ourselves. And then we can love others. So anyway, lambs, I just want to go over that, those scriptures, and you can read into them as you wish, as you please, and I would encourage you to do so. But anyway, I'm going to do um, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 13. I'm going to read it, and then y'all can go along. I'm going to. I'm going to play a little song here before I do that, though. Just a moment. I'm back. I'm playing the song Love by Bought With A Price. It's an instrumental uh, song from his album, uh, Fruit of the Spirit. And it's by Greg Wilson. So this is an instrumental song called Love. And it's a beautiful song. And I hope you enjoy it. Because... You know, the theme of this uh, episode today is love. So that's why I'm praying. I'm playing uh, songs based on love today. Um, anyway, so uh, you wonderful lambs out there. I'm going to read First um, Corinthians chapter 13 verses 1 through 13. So it's chapter 13 with 13 a biblical verses in it so it has something huh? 13 13 so anyway though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity I am become as sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal and though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity. I am nothing. 
And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, and have not charity, it profited me nothing. Charity suffered long, and is kind. Charity envied not. Charity vaunted not itself. It is not puffed up. Does not behave itself unseemly. Seeketh not her own. Is not easily provoked. Thinketh no evil. Rejoice it not in iniquity, but rejoice it in the truth. Bear it all things, believe it all things, hope it all things, endure it all things. Charity never faileth, but what charity never faileth. But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, that when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face, now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. And now abided faith, hope, charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. Wow, guys, that is a wonderful passage. And I remember my mother when I was a teenager and I wasn't operating in love toward her. She was talking to a relative about me. uh, And then the relative gave her this scripture to refer it to me to read. And I read it. My mother told me to read it and I read it. And And I was convicted, but I didn't repent right away. But I did repent to her a couple days later behind my attitude, my bad attitude toward my mother at the time. Uh, So anyway, even though I was a child of God at that time, I was an early baby Christian then because that was in my teen years. I got saved at 17. So I was still new in the faith of God I was still new in my Christian walk you know and it was I came as a child of God you know full of bondage you know and full of all types of rage and all types of stuff because I've been abused and bullied all my life you know operating with this Culver Gain Stocking Program you know at the time I didn't know I was enlisted in the Culver Gain Stocking Program back then way for many years until I got like a full grown woman in my late forties. So anyway, um so lambs I just want to encourage you and anyone, even if you're not a lamb, this message is not just for lambs, but this is for the perps too. <laughs> this message for anybody, all mankind everywhere in this world that will be listening to this episode. So Anyway, this is for all of us that we need to walk in the spirit of love because we can do all these works and and stuff and do all these good deeds and stuff and feed the hungry and the poor, clothe the poor, whatever. Work in soup kitchens and we can buy gifts for everybody or whatever and we can prophesy and speak in tongues or pray loud or pray low or whatever. But if we're not walking in love, if we're not walking in charity, then, you know, all these good deeds don't profit us. Excuse me, upper. Sorry. Profit us nothing. It doesn't profit us nothing, you know, and it means nothing to God in the eyes of God. When we're not walking in love and we're doing all these good deeds and trying to cover up with these good deeds and then we don't love people. We don't respect people. We talk to people like crabs. We play manipulative games with people and stealing and robbing people and lying to people and lying about people slandering and praying all kind of witchcraft against people and stuff and I'm talking about the evil people I'm not talking about the lambs so much that do this but I'm talking about your enemies lambs they do this stuff to you they're not walking in charity toward you they're walking in hatred toward you and they don't understand what 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verses 1 through 13 on st- says walking in agape love because they can't walk in that love because they are not the children of God 
and they are spiritually dead and the their spiritual father is the devil so